Hello, Mixer. Welcome to episode 10 of the Legacy of Asim. As we uh, we go deep into the game, and this this could be the definite end for the party. So, first and foremost, let's uh, let's go ahead and see what exactly is going on with the party. Hello, party. Hi, sir. Hi. Hi, sir. So, Hi. I mean, just Hi, let's, let's cover our bases. Um, starting at the top, working your way down, as all of you can see, to Discord. Um, why don't you introduce your character, uh, Thomas, you can wait um, for the last time um, prior to today's execution. Mm hmm Just go ahead, Angel. Hi, I'm playing Outland. He is a ranger, drow. <laughs> He still knows himself as a uh, high elf. So yeah, that's what he is. Very he, oh, he's an albino drow. Okay. Brian. Um. Hi, I'm Dragon Druid. I play um. Brienne. She is a human dragoon. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you guys really don't, really not embracing being on the block and, and saying your final words. <laughs> Apparently, the first two are, are not talkers. What about uh, what about you, Firefly? What about your character? Uh, hi, uh, I I'm Firefly. I play Ileana. Uh, she's a half elf with long black hair and white skin, green eyes. She's like stands at five foot seven. She's really inquisitive. Usually she's writing thing da things down, but at the moment, it's proving a bit difficult. So she's committing a lot to memory. A uh, wise druid once told her that you experience things by doing. I, she didn't think that she'd be experiencing quite this, obviously. But it'll be a new experience. Uh, you know. So it's going to be interesting. First hand notes on death. Exactly. How often do you get this chance? The... Apparently, for you guys, kind of, kind of, <laughs> frequently. Well, it's a once people, in a lifetime. <laughs> normal people don't generally get more than one. She can compare from the other. Compare uh, and contrast death, death, death. death experiences. Mm -hmm. She'll mull over it in the afterlife, apparently. She's technically a bard. I don't think if it, it was ever said in <laughs> canon or anything. So, that'll bring us to Craig. Hi, buddy. Hi, I'm Craig. I play Mad Ringer. Um, he is a human warlock, fairly unopposing, with a face that is easily forgotten. He's in his late 20s, brown hair, brown eyes. Only distinguishing mark would be the small gold flakes in his eyes, and most of the time he ends up wearing uh, studded, green studded leather armor. And this is his first time, or no, this will be his second time in the news, but the first live time. So, and 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 the reason our intrepid adventurers are kind of in this predicament slightly. Azuri, why don't you introduce your character? Hi, <laughs> I'm Azuri the Kitty, and I'm playing. The, the rather stubborn Roslyn Clearwater, who uh, is you missed your middle name. It's Roslyn Halfling Punter Clearwater. She actually has a middle name, surprisingly enough, but not that one. <laughs> she's probably the main. She, she's probably the key main reason to why everyone, almost everyone, is a. Uh, on the chopping block. Uh, probably one of the reasons why why there's been a bit of problems between the party. She's about to learn quickly about uh, being quiet and stuff. I guess you could say. And finally, so the only member of the party who's... Uh... Not in any immediate danger. Hi, Nasi. Hi, how's it going? That's not true. I'm with a dragon. 
True. Well, you, at the end of the last episode, you were with a dragon. Yes. I will not say anything about whether the dragon is still alive or not. Whether mm-hmm. you may have barely survived the encounter at one hit point before you scored the final blow. We won't say anything about that part of the tree. Okay. More to the side. More to the side. Got More it. More to the side. Gotcha. Um, Nasi playing Thomas. Um, little halfling uh, who uh, apparently is used to open doors and windows in unconventional ways. Um, mainly through uh, Rosalind's boot. He, uh, you know, likes to have fun, likes to, uh, likes to party, and, uh, speaking of parties, his is gone. It's true. That is true. So hopefully you're able to track. Or he's already given up and he's gone back God to a brothel. Us. One of the two. We're not quite sure yet. So, let's get into it, well, shall we? As we last left the party, you were looking, all of you down at the the long several hundred feet drop to the rocky jagged rocks below uh, to your backs in darkness there are, is a cell and uh, kind of unsure of where the rest of the party is eventually as one calls out to another you kind of can figure out that there is quite a bit of stone in between each of you. So you couldn't go from one cell to the next uh, on the outside. But you know that you're all there. As the uh, the sun begins to rise and illuminate each of you see a basket come hanging down in front of you. Small kind of you know, we, uh, woven wicker basket. It's got the, like, the little lid that, that secures on it. Kind of lay, lowers down on a rope in front of each cell. Reach out. Mm-hmm. Take the basket. Yeah. So I want you to give me a dexterity save. So Matt goes to reach out And immediately, almost as if this is a game they play, flicks it away from you. You go to reach out, you come close, you slip, stumble, land on your ass. And you just grasp on pulling yourself back up as you hear some laughing from up above. Ah, we almost got that one! And you hear a bunch of other men kind of laughing. Come on, Dunn, don't you want to eat? You play the game. And Mad, you realize he's after, you know, you almost fell. He actually swings it in so you can grab it. Oh, okay. You know, I make you play it twice. Inside is a, about, you know, a small chunk of bread and like a kind of a, a flask of like a, a water skin. That's what you got for the day. And they pull the basket back up. Call up, thank you. Yeah, don't worry. You won't be thanking us soon enough. Anyone else grabbing their their food for the day? Eliana would. Dexterity save. All rolls are whispered, remember. Yeah, you snatch her in. Ah, oh, this one's lively, you call down. She got a first try, didn't even slip. What'd you say? They, they call out that you didn't even slip. They're calling back and forth to each other. They're oh. basically fishing for prisoners. Oh. They're entertaining yeah. themselves. Oh. Inside is the same. And a, a b- bread that's going to... You're not going to be fully fed, but you're going to be starving by the end of the night. But enough to keep you alive. Thank you. Who are you? Oh, don't worry. Your book's interesting. I'm sure there'll be some people that want to speak to you later about it. Yeah. Oh. 
has provided nowhere uh, advantage to everyone in the party from Fallen One. Thanks, Fallen. Thanks, Thanks Fallen. Thank you, Fallen. And Ileana and, and Antlin, you have two. Oh, thank you. Oh, and I will sweet. check thank the tweets because we were pretty close already. Nope, so what was away. it? Six out of ten for advantage. At Retweet 20 retweets, people. At twenty retweets, it's natural twenties, and then from there on out, magic items and other boons to the party. <gasps> so your friends to retweet also. What's the the check? Because I'm gonna reach out. Uh, I'll put it in. No, no, no. What's the 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 check? Oh, dexterity save. Okay, Alan's gonna reach out. Waits for your roll. Yeah, Anton. Still, you just you wait. You kind of see the 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 rope swinging just a little bit, like he's ready, and you catch it just at the second with you know your elven dexterity. As uh, ah, this one was ready for it. No fun. Kind of starts pulling it up once you take your bread and water. So, Rosalind and uh, Bran. I see. Rosalind will take it. Who wants to play the five percent chance game? Rosin will take it. Okay, dexterity save. Uh, yeah, you 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 try, you slip, you you grab the the rope at the same time. You feel it tug a little bit, but you get your other hand back up on the ledge, pulling yourself back up and taking. And wait, as I grab it, I'm gonna try to yank it. Okay, give a strength check. And once you pull yourself back up. Okay, yeah. He wasn't ready for you to yank it. You pull the, the rope clean out, and uh, you're now dangling a rope with one hand, pulling onto the ledge. Are you going to pick your other hand? You didn't think this through, did you? No, I didn't, actually. She's going to cl- try and climb back up then. With the rope or no? Um... Is there any way that I can... You can try and salvage it. Be a, a higher DC, isn't it? Wouldn't it? Would it be I a... Mean, he, there's, there's footholds and stuff. Like It's not like it's crazy. It's not sheer cliff. I mean, they, didn't, they didn't carve down the side of the cliff. They don't remember. They don't magic. Okay. So yeah, she'll try to salvage it. And... Okay. Give me an athletics check. So yeah, maybe... you managed to get up with the rope and deck. Moran... <laughs> As you go to reach for the the food, it's raised back up. Oh. You all distinctively hear the sounds of footsteps. As uh, I'm using the order. So, Mad, Brian, and Antlin, you watch ten individuals walk down with clubs and walk right by all of you. Okay. I was going to say I automatically start scarfing the food down. Nope. I'm right by you. Okay. <laughs> Rosalind, you look up a little bit smiling in your victory that you have a rope. You see ten individuals outside your cell and they uh, they unlock the door. I, I had I she probably has an idea that what she did was not a good idea, but no. oh. there is a There is something that's gonna stop me for a second. <laughs> Paul hey Fallen donated one dollar. Brian, as you look around in your cell, somehow three magical druid berries good berries form <laughs> and roll in your cell. <laughs> So you are not going to starve today. Rosalind might. Rosalind might. you're going to hurt. Die. Rosalind? Yes? I mean, are you going to actually try and turn this into a lethal com- contest? Or are no. you going to accept your beating? She... She'll accept. The ten mi- like The rest of you can hear it echo in the hall. Like, bones are breaking... You know, they are literally beating the living hell out of her. 
the clubs. Ten, it's a ten on one, weapons versus non weapons, beat, beat down. You know, yeah. eyes one eye swollen shut. You know your fingers are each individually broken. Ouch. They take your water. They leave you your bread. They take your water and they pour it over the side. One man turns around. He fills it back up and leaves it for you as they walk out. And all you hear from them is traitor as they shut the door and lock it. They proceed to head back up. I guess I'll leave this as a, as a chance if you guys want to call out. Yeah, I'll call out. Where are we? To the individuals as they pass? They, they don't seem to be in the mood to, to discuss with any of you anymore. Well, there, there was all a, gun, a game. They were having fun. But I was hoping after the beating, they'd yeah. be in a better mood. It's worth a shot. I want to make a comment out of character. It, it, all in character, guys. They're good. Yeah. Huh? Roslyn? There's a flesh wound! Ow! What did you... What... What happened? Uh, just... My own stubbornness. My... It's okay. Just don't pull on the... Just don't pull on the rope. That's my voice. Why would we pull on the rope? It's... We could fall and die. Nothing. Just, just walk on the cliff. Watch. Fuck my ow, my fingers. I don't know okay. what cliff watch is. Welcome to the home base of Orion's. Oh. That's not good. I'm sorry, everyone. I got you all into this. We're a team. We got into this ourselves. We should have checked the uh, food and water for. Why would he de betray you that way? I, I betray us. Jamros? I had to no, be he... him, right? The last thing I remember was eating and drinking, and then I was out. I didn't have it. I didn't. I Same. felt like I was drunk, but I, I didn't drink alcohol. He would never. You all passed ow, out, and ow, 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 ow. he was. I was talking to him for a bit, and I was trying to help Rosalind up out of her chair. And as soon as I stood up, I'll, I don't remember anything else. Timbers would never. He's not. He's not. <clears throat> he's not smart enough to pull something like that. Don't tell anyone I said that. Are you sure about that? Look in the position that we're in now. No. Oh. He's I mean, a fox field. Do you really I, think the fox fields would team up with the Orions? You haven't really told us that much of the fox fields. No, they... They, they hate each other. But if one fox hill were to gain from your balance, he did like to spend money. He would never do that. <coughs> he um. How he drank he some of. Oh, he drank some of um. Rosalind's drink. As a way to prove that he wasn't in on it. Maybe it was in the food then. Maybe he was trying to deceive us. Yeah. Do, do not tell... <coughs> Ow. The fox fields. <clears throat> oh, either which way, we're here now and we have to find a way out. What can you tell us about the, the Orions that might get us out of here? Uh, 
history. So if I look over the edge, what do I see down? Uh, a really long drop, and then there but like, are jagged rocks at the very bottom. So terrain-wise, we're next to a mountain? You're on a cliff. Cliff Watch is, is securely uh, on a cliff here, bud. And you see like a pine forest below it. You can kind of see like a small kind of pass heading in. Um, looks like a much colder temperature down there. Okay. Well, from the situation you're in right now, <coughs> we were pretty much screwed at the moment, but, uh, I, can I roll a history to see if there is any way that she, they might be able to slip out of it? Sure. Uh, while you're, while she's doing that, um, I know they took our stuff, but what are we actually wearing? Uh, basically rags. Not even your regular clothing. Nope. Ah, uh, you know this. These cells, you either stay there until your, your time's up, whether that be public execution or drunk tank, whatever. Or you take your own life by jumping. Hmm. Yeah, she'd be like, it's either... It's either... The execution or the suicide. Pick your poison. An oubliette? Uh. Yep. You saying, Craig? No, oh, I'm not going to give up. So, I'll wait till the time. Uh, or executioner block. I have fun with that. I'm just gonna, I guess. <laughs> I guess they really did catch me. And mm. they're not that happy with me still. I would advise staying away from the edge as possible. If I'm not sure what yours sounds like, but mine has a giant open cliff drop. They are all giant open cliff. That's why I said suicide or the execution. Pick your poison. So most of the day starts to pass as you make time in your cells either talking to one another or you know, sleeping, whatever you get through. Having no items. Until a certain part of the day the sun is just in the right area and each of you start to bake in your cells as you are in the hot sun in unforgiving temperature and there is no point of shade uh, to, forgive, to give you any sort of solace. Now when you say rags, are we like cloth? Like, like cloth, cloth rags, yeah. Cloth on top, cloth on bottom, or is it just like one whole tunic? Kind of more of a tunic. All right, Atlan's going to huddle up in a corner, or well, he's gonna first remove his remove his uh, cloth tunic. Okay, so you are completely naked. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna like. He's basically well. He's basically gonna survival the shit out of this, or try to, and turn his tunic into a small, I guess, like a like a cover to cover himself over, and huddle up in a corner as best as possible. Yeah, I mean you're not getting out of the sun, but you you do the best you can. Anyone else have anything they're trying to do, or is anyone else getting completely nude? No. <laughs> no, but since... What's around us? Uh, I guess my best is, you mean, that you can see? Yeah. You said we're baking in the sun, so I assume there's like a big cliff wall. Yeah. And that the sun's beating down on us, so there's light inside of our cell. Correct. So, there's another... 
So Paul donates one dollar for no effect, but <laughs> says since Antlin stripped, he just felt this was necessary. Oh god! <laughs> Thanks again, Paulin. <laughs> uh, no all. peep show for you. You know what? Give me a uh, give me a perception check, Eliana. Oh. Um. <laughs> No, you can't see. Handling's impossible. I don't care if you're not 20 double on both sides. G3 sees through solid rock and sees Antlin. God! X-ray! Uh, most of what you see is forest. Kind of a colder mm-hmm. forest. Because, um, I mean, there's nothing technically breaking your horizon. Uh, you see a small kind of geyser. Uh, out in, uh, probably a few, a few days away. And then you see a massive mountain um, about two days away from that. You also see what looks to be like probably campfires, a little bit of smoke dark enough, um, which you would assume based on what you know is probably where orc camps are. Oh. Hey, guys. Outside my window, there's a forest, and then there's a geyser, and then that looks like a couple of days away. There's a mountain, and a couple of days away from that, there's more. As, as she's starting to speak this to you, all of you watch four men walk by you. Oh. And then you look behind you. There are four men outside your cell. One takes out, you know, all of them with clubs. One takes out keys and begins unlocking your cell. Thank you. Put your hands together. Okay. How did you get in here? Put your hands together. Did that, like, fail? No, there's, there's there's a walkway. Um, oh! Yeah, on the inside. Yeah, not on the outside of the... It's, they oh, came from behind I you. Th- oh, I, oh, I didn't know that. I thought there was just a sheer cliff way and they repelled down. Because oh, no. that was think, really cool. Think of a... Think of a regular cell without the back wall. Because the back wall leads outward into the cliff. Oh, that's what you meant. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you are literally grabbed by the chain... Uh, of, of your your manacles and begin dragged away. Eliana? Right, right by you, Razzle, you see her. She's, and then there, you know, you are... You have not been fed well for like a week. Don't exactly have the strength that you normally do to walk. And they begin dragging you. You as your feet can't keep up with their pace. Don't you, don't you hurt her. They're walking by as one man just looks in and spits towards you. <sighs> do you do anything? I mean, there's four of them and they're dragging you out. Don't you fucking hurt her. I, uh, you see the condition Roslyn's in. By the way, Leona. Roslyn, are you okay? I'm living. As you are dragged by in front of Antlin. Okay. You see the whole show. You see, you just see his 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 albino butt cheeks as he tries to cover up modesty. They're kind of bright. This is torture. <laughs> you drag in front of Brian. Antlin's naked. <laughs> Antlin's what? Antlin's naked. <laughs> oh, I saw Geyser and a couple of days away, and then there's some campfires, and I think we were here oh, or there. <laughs> um, Brienne looks at Liana and says, "Are you, are you okay? What are they, where are they taking you? What's what's happening?" She's just being dragged. She's just talking. <laughs> she's trying to tell you all the information. She's being dragged away. Don't you freaking hurt her! I don't know. Rosalind look, look, didn't look very well. Um. If I'm gonna be beat up, try to be quiet. Um, hugs. You're being dragged away. Why do you sound so calm? It's my coping mechanism. <laughs> dragged in front of Mad. Be strong. 
She gives the best thumbs up she can with shackled hands. Oh yeah, you still be using your fingers and thumbs. Use your toes. Do your toes up. <laughs> toes? No. I, I, Big toe first. I, if I make it back, uh, hugs, first of all. Uh, thud, thud, thud as she starts getting tracked up the stairs. Wince, okay, bye! Wince, wince. <laughs> It's like, a, it's like it's like it's like your feet and, and like shins that are been One, smacking two, three, every time. Four, five, six, there's there's seven, fifteen steps. Eight, nine. Okay. There's fifteen steps. <laughs> Ross, it's the last thing you hear about. I just I just use loose side of her. Ross and will like punch the wall or something. Probably fucking hurts because you hurt yourself again. Yeah, she's angry though. She she's angry though. She, she's angry, okay. though. Well, I wonder, it's ten dollars. Two net twenties for Siliana. Hold on, I, I get the whole thing because I'm pretty sure you entertained the living crap out of him as you did the red else. Uh, let's see. What's the rest of the? I'm thing? shaking my tail feather. Because she is the calmest prisoner ever. She truly sounded horrified that Anthony was naked, though. <laughs> <laughs> no one dollars for Atlin. Hey, I'm an elf. This this albino white ass is is nice looking. Okay. Julian, yeah, uh -huh. you are being dragged across, you know, dirt, dirt and mud, and you know, it's a mix mash of, of buildings. Some are made of wood, some are made of more thatch, some even in the adobe style, based on what they have here. Um, you're dragged to the, uh -huh. you, as you're dragged through the streets. There's a couple things you pick up. One, uh -huh. you're not seeing a lot of women or children. Okay. In general, okay. This is just. You're seeing mostly men, mostly fighting age men. You realize that the um, the prison itself is pretty decently far away from everything else. I would say there's nothing within 100 feet of the prison at all. It's like 100 feet of just open area, okay? Mm -hmm. From the town to the prison. Obviously, probably for a reason, right? So that they can see it yeah. approaching. Uh-huh. And so the, uh, imagine so the villagers wouldn't hear like the horde scream and stuff too. That's just not anything. Bones hitting the yeah close below. You I then notice stuff. that there are some livestock. There's some caravans. You notice that most of the men are looking at you and saying a couple things in between each other as you're dragged towards the center of town. In the center of town, there is one massive guild-like structure, uh, very similar to the guild hall. It's got the uh, the crest that all the men seem to be wearing, you know, kind of emblazoned into the doors. And then there's another smaller kind of uh, building across that seems to have um, horses and more livestock. Uh, more horses and, like, caravan stuff uh, next to it. Looks like a, an Old West saloon is the best way I can describe it. It seems to be bustling cool. with all sorts of people. Uh -huh. And you were dragged... Towards the guild hall. Sorry, oh. no drinks today. Oh, maybe later. You you are dragged into the guild hall. Um, and uh, you know at this point, like your your shins and your feet have split open, just for being dragged, bleeding, dirty. Ow. 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 Yeah, stings Ow. real bad. You know. Mm -hmm. you, you've done a hard day's work in your life. <laughs> you're, yeah. you're aware. So oh, yeah. you are kind of brought in. And, uh, you know, taken to, like, a back room. Your hands are, you know, forced above your head. And almost like a meat hook in the ceiling. You're dangled there about six inches off the ground. Your feet don't touch. Now, I have a question. Is all my weight rested on my wrist, or is it uh, the weight it's, rested it's, on it's, the... Okay, so the, the, weight is, the weight is initially distributed on the hook right so uh -huh. the, the initial kind of pull is on that one point where the chain hooks on then you have uh -huh. a secondary pull on each of your wrists uh -huh. and then that would extend to your shoulders where your pressure okay. the pressure of being in like this is okay and like you you can't just graze your toes to take any pressure up okay you realize enough that this is going to hurt come Depending on how long they plan on keeping you here. Oh, yeah. Uh, if I stay here like this any long at all, it, everything's going to get real stiff and sore. They, uh, they, they look to you, <laughs> chuckle, and they close the door, leaving you by yourself. 
Okay, bye. What? What's the place that I'm in at? What are the woods like? Like the floor? Uh, it's all kind of like a, a patchwood of different, a couple different types of wood. It looks like whatever they had. Oh. No. The guards that brought me in, you said that there was four and four of them? There were four of them that came. Yeah. The four of them that came? I assume they were all male with clubs? Or could I not they tell? Were they were all male. No, they were all male. No, they're, they're not hiding their features. Yeah. Okay. For no reason for it. Yeah. All seemingly human. What was the was emblem the on the guild door? Mm -hmm. uh, the Orion Chris. I can't think of what it looks like off the top of my head right now for some reason. I think uh, you have it made, don't you, Azur? Yes, it's on the dock that I sent you of Yeah, I'll, I'll have to get it and put it in. Um, I will see if I can find that. So, you are just being hung there for for a while. Make me some constitution save. Make me a constitution save for hour number one. Okay. If I look up, what's on the ceiling? It's a wooden ceiling. It's a hook. It's bolted in. Starts to, it's, it's, it's really starting to hurt you. The sore is sticking in. Yeah, you call out, what do you do? Ow. Uh, does it look like. Now, I'm picturing like a meat hook that has a curved edge on the end of it. Yeah, which it's means. It's kind of like the meat hook that has like. The, it's, it's, it's pretty much, there's no way for you to kind of. I mean, you could try yeah. and, and get yourself off. The hook. I could, but like. I mean, it's feasible. It yeah. Might not be super easy. No, probably not, because it take a lot of momentum. I know how heavy I am to get up there, and I don't have a lot of movement. So the Orion emblem is uh, three circles with like mm -hmm. a, a crescent moon. Almost think of uh, the rebel symbol. Except that middle neck is three circles that aren't attached, and then another uh, crescent moon um, underneath here. Okay. I will, I will get you a, a screenshot of it. Are there any windows in this place? Is there sunlight? Or Nope. You're in a dark room. Oh, neat. It's kind of hot. You think about it. No air movement. Is there light coming in? Nope. The, the guards were human, so they knew where to break me. Was there light when they came in? Yeah, from the, the main hall. Okay. And then they shut the door. Is, does yeah. the door have like a trap hole? Is there a... Is there, a, um, there seems to be some sort plan? of... Yeah, uh, kind of a, a slot. Okay. Uh, give me a couple seconds. Hold on. No, that's fine. I'm literally making a hand over here. Do I owe Jonah? Because I know if when Azuri, or not Azuri, gosh darn it, I know when uh, Roslyn did like against what they wanted, then she got all beat and stuff. Oh, that's pretty. You did that, Azuri? Yep. It's actually. Um, oh, yeah. So mm. you actually might have noticed it on the back of Rosalind's neck when like in the bath scene. Like Was it a tattoo or a brand? Tattooed. Oh. I forgot about your tattoos. Did they have yeah. tattoos on them? The cards? Mm -hmm. well, you would, you would figure some are in different locations. Yeah, probably. Makes note to self. I have no writing utensils. Her hands move in phantom motions as she makes a note to herself <laughs> to ask if, if the different places in the body would mean the different rank where they are, if they survive. Um, so you're making a choice. What are you doing? One. She's gonna swing a little bit, not mm -hmm. to get free, just to see if she can kind of relieve the pressure a little bit. 
Yeah, it, it, it swings for like, you know, it relieves it for that secondary, but it's that same thing of you settle back in kind of with a little bit more force, so yeah. it really doesn't help. So, as all this is happening, since I was reminded of the tattoo, thank you, Rosalind. The uh, Mad, Brian, and Antlin, you watch a pack of guards walk by. Again? Mm -hmm. He, uh, well, he clothes himself and he walks up to the door looking to see where they're going. Seem to be going. Obviously, Ileana's not with him. So, you, you recognize that the only people to the other side of you. Or Ileana and Rosalind. Rosalind. You see them kind of stand there. And uh, they light one of these small furnaces. Kind of like a brazier. Uh, with fire mm -hmm. and they put some, you know, alcohol to kind of spark it real hot. And they, uh, they look to you and they take a short sword and put the end in there and they, they walk away. She, does she know what this is? She can kind of guess. Do, does she have an idea what this? They're gonna de -brain, They're gonna de tattoo you. They're gonna slice uh, your tattoo off. Blood. No, run. They're gonna. They're gonna straight uh, brand it with so much heat that they destroy the skin. Castration. It's a castration. Yeah. <laughs> her her blood runs cold, and she she's not happy. With that, no. And they make sure they do it just in front of you so that, you know, the fear hits you. Yeah, she, she kind of scoots away. She's in a good drow. What kind of elf is, what kind of elf is Edlin? He's a drow. He's a no, I'm a high elf. I'm a high elf. <laughs> so, uh, Ileana, the concept after hour two that you've been hung up here. Yeah, you're holding on. It's still getting worse, but you know you're you're kind of calming yourself. Do I see like has anybody gone past the door or heard anything? You've heard people steps? moving around, yeah. Oh, we've heard conversation. Yeah, really, conversation. You heard people moving around more or less. Hmm. They kind of you figure they probably know someone's inside, so they're not gonna have pointed conversations in front of you. I know, but I can dream. One day. One day. Uh. Hello? You hear footsteps. A small creak of light opens up. You see a pair of eyes. Very well softened up then. Clear his eyes. Blue. Oh, hi. Um. For what? For questioning. Quite the scribe you are. Thank you. I like questions. Good. Still closes the slit. A number. Minutes pass. In the door, you hear the lock open. And some people come in. They light some of like the, the sconces on the walls. There's another small... Looks like a big brazier. They light that and put a couple daggers in it. Just the blades. That's really cool. And you see the one individual come in with the book open. Look at it. Very interesting writing, my dear. Yeah. Snaps it shut. Thank you. Be careful. Oh, this is this is very valuable to you. Walks over to the brazier, puts it on a thin ledge over the fire. Oh, it's safe there, you know, unless 
accidents happen. We wouldn't want any of those, would we? No, that would that would be terrible. He mm. takes a seat. And it looks like a very comfortable seat. And does uh, a stool, please. Puts you lift like lifts your legs up. Puts your just so that your your the balls of your feet can kind of rest and try and take some pressure off. Oh, thank you. My name's Juliana. Who are you? Oh, it's nice to meet you, Juliana. My name at this point is not important. Oh, what you look like? He is an elvish male. He uh, has a nasty kind of scar over his um, right eye. Otherwise, complexion, very handsome individual. Um, very well built. You would akin him more towards a fighter than anything else. Can you and see out of his right eye? Yeah. The, the, the pupil is fine. Uh, he's got green eyes, if you, if you ask. Dark, like uh, almost oaken hair. He looks towards you and says, So, you're going to tell me everything. And I'll think about letting you and one other person go. Of all them, who would it be? is that? Because it'll get you killed. And I don't want you guys to die. <laughs> he laughs. Hardly. So you're probably just crazy then. Talk of what you've written in your book. Bing! I think I'm perfectly sane. One is mad. <laughs> he chuckles. You understand that. You see, your. Travel doesn't make sense. As you've written it, other worlds, gods. Whatever those are. With names, I think you know more than everyone else on this plane. Oh, no, I was just available to learn some information that I'm able to quite happily share when people wish. Mostly, except for the one that I'm not allowed to share. It's very confusing. You know, well, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. You know what's interesting out of everything? What? You were the last person to see the Elder alive. Oh. You actually wanted for murder. Far be it from us to to hold the just you know, the kingdom. We caught a child killer today, and now we have a murder of, a, of an old man. I didn't. I didn't kill him. I mean, I I really wish to believe this, Miss Iliana, but. You see, there's an issue here. You're traveling with another murderer of innocent lives. I didn't know she was a murderer till what is it? Till they 
So when you wrote it in your book, denoted, with the date, and then, I mean, you have traveled with her for quite some time since. Mm hmm So how, it doesn't make me believe that you didn't murder. I mean, any rational person would have left a murderer behind, turned them into the authorities, would they not? She even had the bounty on her. And according to your notes, you know, she informed you of this. And should, I didn't say it showed you the bounty, but I would assume you would have asked to look at it. It's just proper after all. So, I mean, you don't... And you don't turn them into the authorities, you instead help abate a child murder. Well, from what she told me, it's not like the only reason she was a child murderer was because of her connections to the people that she originally served. And You mean me? So 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 for me that wasn't even there. I made her kill a child. There's no need to make it personal. I'm sure you didn't even know about it. Not until after she ran. See? So obviously, it was just the people that were partaking in that on the so mission. So my good brothers forced her to murder a child. And then she decided to. So, Eliana, let's play a game. He looks over. Fetch me a child! I don't care which one. No, not your own, you idiot. The man runs away. Hey, about six-year-old little girls brought back after you know, 10, 15 minutes. Put in the room. Ah, hi, dear. We're going to play a game. Okay? She, like, looks up a little worried, seeing you in the predicament. Uh, the two guards lift you off and hand you a dagger. Kill her! Uh, you go free. If you kill her. I'll even let you take two party members. Rosalind is not one of them. Kill her! It's you or her. What was that last part? It's you or her. The little girl's like freaking out. The door's closed. No, kill her. No. Then you're going to die. It's okay. She's got a whole lot ahead of her. Takes the dagger. Thank you, dear. I'll see you at home for dinner tonight. The little girl runs out. Bye. Says bye, Dad. Puts the dagger there. The, they lift you up, put your back on the hanger. See? You weren't forced to do it. You, cho you chose to give your life up for her. Well, she seemed done. And what? The other girl wasn't innocent? She probably was, especially from how Rosalind stated it. She was just a little kid. But she was forced by us. And I mean, we have you in a much worse situation than she was. But I don't... You took her in, right? Like, you as in the, the family and everything, right? The right, so she came to us. She's one of our own. One of our good ones. Fought many excursions. And she did, and she fought, and trusted then she you guys, murdered. right? Then she murdered a child. That's, that's what I, I mean. She trusted everyone there to have her back. To be part of a team. To help her and grow. To teach her, like, like a child. To help her be the person that she needed to be. If you and 
been raised like that and been told to always follow the example of people that you trust. If you're unsure, you can always ask people who you travel with, who you can depend on, who would give your life. They, you there is the same thing. And one of them tells you to do it. I don't... I can see why she would do it. It doesn't make it right, no. It does not but make I it right. Also... We have the rules. Did you investigate the afterwards? When she fled and immediately turned her back on us? I'm yeah. sorry, that person does not ter carry weight in my opinion. Not Loyalty her. Carries. Not her. The murders. Of the child and her family. I have nine men that watched her kill her, that child. And if her point of view is true, as you read, then that is nine people who were accomplices and told her, probably badgered her, maybe to kill her. And badgering provides weight. She knew the rules. And if she thought they would have her back, why did she run? It took me quite a while to find out why she ran. Many men sat there and did not even speak about it to me. In your predicament, they eventually were made to talk. But they were willing to keep her secret, even after she betrayed us. I'm sorry. I've done a bad thing out of character. I should have been inside in this entire time. Seems to be telling the truth. So. What I, what I fail to understand here is why I don't kill all of you. This is my, my problem. She is dead. She might not be a corpse yet, but she is dead. Had she committed a crime and confessed to it to us back then, we would have talked and she would have been locked up and punished. Lost rank. Because after all, it was an orcish child, but still a child. The betrayal seems to be telling you the truth. The betrayal, the attempt to destroy everything we are, when we are the only people that will fight the orcs to the south to keep people like you from the city safe from their raids and plunders. That is unacceptable. And you knowingly all ac accompanied her, protected her. We had a reason. And your reasoning is what? To stop a very bad person. Yet you travel with one. Would you like a chair? You know what? I am a big proponent of the stage. Something we don't get out here very often. I like everyone to have their say. Do you agree? I do. It helps make sure that the information at least can be known. Because see, my men want to do something else with you entirely. And they're savages and they, have, they don't see many women. However, I think there might be something to your writing. I do believe it. It's the only reason we're speaking, and you're not burning for being a heretic. So what's going to happen today is, tonight, you and everyone but Roslyn are going to put on a sort of show for the populace. Convince my men to let you free and I will hand, I will hit, shackle you down and send you on your way. 
if you don't, well, then you'll be burned with Roslyn the next day. All of you. Do you accept my offer? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, alive, yes. Sound good enough? I mean, unless you're willing to tell me something that apparently you won't tell me. Because you're providing me no sort of extra information. A reason to. Believe anything you say. think of your people and your place here as as good? Like, like do a service there? We do do a service. Is every single man in my command a good person? Probably not. There are bad apples and else, but better yet they fight on the frontier against an enemy than you know, walk your city streets mugging or doing other worse things to innocent lives? No, that wouldn't be good. No. Yep, yeah, that is what she I wants. Can... She wants to destroy it. She... Oh, you mean Rosalind? Oh, yes. I thought you were talking to someone else for a second. She wanted to run to the fox fields. You read what I wrote, so she wanted to run the foot to the fox fields. And she did. Because. She, to destroy us. Because. Because she thinks we're the reason that she murdered the child. Not her own bloodlust. Because. I'm waiting for the because. She's just. I don't remember everything you wrote. Oh. Hold on, I'll look. I'm doing this off memory of what's been said. I'm letting you have all the notes. I mean, she did it. She had a reason. She obviously regretted it. If they forced her, made her. I know we were in that situation. I... I would hope... I... Your life was in more danger than hers. If the stories be true and you did not murder the child. No. My point has been proven. In fact, I guess there is one last offer. You can convince your party to join our operation in whole, and I'll let you kill Roslyn as a group to prove your loyalty. Those are your options. Good looks to the men that is to bring you down. Return her to her cell. We shall speak tomorrow morning for her decision. They lift you up. The finally hitting the floor again, you know, you just the, that throbbing sensation sets in, no more pain. As blood kind of rushes back. And they drag you, <laughs> the noteless DM, dun, 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 back across town. You see the little girl playing with friends? Yeah, I know She waves to you. As she does, this time her, you see the, her like sleeve of her like dress comes down, you see the tattoo. Aww, she was back. And you were dragged all the way back towards um, the cells. As you arrive at the cells, 
all the men follow you down this time. As they drag you by. Mad, you see a pretty bruised up Ileana. Um, doesn't look like she's taking any hits, but definitely not in the best shape. As the sun's starting to kind of recede, you guys not baking anymore. Brienne, you see the same. Angelin, you see the same. Rosalind, you see her. You, you look at the bruises, you know, kind of. She was hung up in question, obviously. Mm, she's. What's she gonna do to orcs? I mean, you. What do they probably, do to you? You probably took, per, you know, part in a number of those against orcs, trying to get information out, burning and and, and just literally, you know, stabbing and cauterizing the wounds immediately. But she I, doesn't what? seem to have any any sort of stab wounds. Okay. So you did not go as far. She's a little relieved of them not, like, doing the full uh, torture. <laughs> and Andalyn asked what they did to you as you're getting put back in your cell. Uh, we talked. He had lots of questions. I had some, too. Uh, they take your arms through the bars and unlock so you have your hands back to yourself. Thank you. Uh, he offered us a couple of deals. Um, I, I they start. You guys first. see them coalescing outside Rosalind's cell as you hear it unlock, and uh, you see them pick up this me. large sword. Don't as the men just pile on and hold her down. <laughs> And you just feel that you hear the screams of Rosalind as they are burning the flesh um, where the tattoo is. Like, it's a piercing scream that echoes into each of your chambers. And as they, you know, pull the blade back, you know, there's a small smell of, like, burnt hair as Rosalind has long hair. It's going to get in the way. Okay, I guess this is a good time to bring this up. Um, because I had I had no reason to, to bring it up yet, um, I'm going to use Antlin's racial. He's, he's basically slowly more and more anger fills, fills him. Mm-hmm. Until, and he's cast mm-hmm. his darkness spell in front of their door, if he can see it, as best mm-hmm. as possible, or just, or just in the hallway. In the hallway? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, what, whatever he can see. In front of the door. Whatever he can. Rosalind? Like, you can kind of see from, that area. You could see it so it would encompass that. Okay, so in front of the door, he just yells out, Leave her alone! And the darkness appears in front of the door. They look, and they look at this darkness, and they're kind of swinging their hands through it. Rosalind, you're pretty much incapacitated. I mean, you're awake. You're pretty much incapacitated between pain and the beatings. And just two of them look at each other. And you just hear them say, We take the witch next. On my, over my dead body. You're gonna try and get up and stop them? If they're gonna try and take. Antlin. No, they're going to try to take Antlin. He's the one that just cast it. Yeah, she is going to try. Okay, if... give me a concept so we can even stand. Ah. Rosalind tries to push someone just crawling, shouting at them, and one man literally just turns around and boot across your face. Night, night. Whack. As he goes, as she is out, immediately. A minute passes. As it disappears, you hear the door slam, Antlin, and they have surrounded your cell. Not with clubs. They are. They have drawn their swords. He just looks at them angrily and then just backs up towards the, the cliff edge, just watching them. They put the key in, click, 
and the door swings open. The men are slowly entering. Um, don't, don't hurt him. We burn witches here. Shouts back down to you. I know, but I, I I needed to talk t to my my friends. He doesn't have a say anymore. Antlin, they're approaching you. They're getting around you. They're ready. But they're basically trying to apprehend you. I have a logistics question. Mm -hmm. How uh, how thick are the walls? I think we said twenty feet between cells. Okay. No, you said there's a walkway in between. Never mind. It's not just a cliff wall. No, so, okay. From one style okay. to another. On, on one end, one edge is open to the cliffs. Uh -huh. Then you have the cell, so we're going you know, sideways. In between each cell, so like if you put the squares. So your cell is the farthest deep, right? Uh-huh. So you do your box, one end's open. To uh -huh. the south of you, there's a stone. Okay? If the open end is west... To the east, there's bars, and then there's a five to ten foot walkway carved inside the cliff itself. So not exposed, it's like a stone walkway. Think of a like a dungeon walkway. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, They're in a line, north and south. Oh, okay. Cool. Sorry. You're welcome. Are you going to fight them, Hintlin? But it's a tiny little convertible. A tiny little convertible, yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Sorry, sorry about that. Um, how many of them are there again? Ten. The entire. Yeah. He's not that dumb. He's gonna cross his arms over his face and he's just gonna take it. Yeah, you uh, you're beaten down and shackled and dragged out with with vigor. So you hear another mugging as he doesn't fight you know they, they put the blades away a couple keeping them out but you know go to uh, clubs softening him up as uh, Brian and Mad you watch like a beaten Antlin hands shattered ankles look like they are not together properly anymore being dragged out be strong That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. There's no response from Antlin as he's dragged away. You, uh, you begin to stir a bit, Roslyn. After the ordeal, they took their time with softening up Antlin. I had been going to tell you all that when our talk with I didn't get his name did you know him Roslyn? she just grabs the man would, he, would she? Uh, let me go look at your notes because I have them up still aha it's like I've come prepared for your you now kitty ha 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 uh, um, you know him, but he's not in your notes, so I'll get your name. Okay. Give me one second. I'm getting it for you. Well, him, he offered us a deal. Two Six. deals. Kinda. He wanted more information. He 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 at least believed what I'd had. He read my notes. Uh, I apologize. Uh, but he he said that if us and the rest of the party 
But Rosalind could put on a show, could convince everyone, let they go, like the guards and the people there, that we could go free. They'll like unshackle us and let us go free. If we don't convince them, we'll be burned with Rosalind the next day. Or uh, the other option was to convince everybody to join their operation. And then we kill Rosalind as a test of loyalty to join the Orions. I... But I wanted to ask if you guys thought that it was... This was something that it might be worth telling people about what we're not supposed to talk about. I don't, I don't want these people to die. I know you said they were terrible people, but they seemed nice. I met, uh, Omaris' daughter, I think. Omaris. It's not his daughter, it's probably a, a similar girl like you. He's taken in, clothed, fed, trained. Oh. He, she, he didn't tell you that. Go to darling. You think it's his daughter. Roz will be able to tell you that. Yeah. He... <sighs> Fuck. He said that the people in your group that were with you, the nine others, that they were questioned like I was, and they tried to, to fight to not give you away for a while you ran. <laughs> that they tried to have your back. But he didn't understand why you ran. Because he said that if you hadn't run, you would have been, like, well, of course, disciplined and everything, but you wouldn't have been killed or have everything. That it was because of the betrayal, which I guess meant going to the Foxfields and wanting to destroy everything. I... I was forced to kill the child. They didn't tell them that, did they? It doesn't... <sighs> Well, you said I mean, the first. You, you said, said the first deal. You, you said that you were forced. Why didn't you just say no? I was fearing for my life. So was I. He said that if he led his daughter in there. And gave me a, a dagger. Not a daughter. Oh. Well, it was a little girl. She was nice. Said we were gonna play a game. That, um, I could kill her. And then I could go free and do the party. But I had to kill her. Of course. He, he thinks everything's a game. Well, it seemed like he would have hold, hold up, held up his end of the bargain, but I... Yeah, right. If he if he would have killed the child, he would he could have taken you in for murder. Oh, I'm I'm wanted for that already. Uh, what? Uh, well, you you remember the elder? Yes. Apparently, I was the last person seen alive with her, so I get kill. I get blamed for killing him. Understandable. <sighs> Even if well, we all know that. There is no ACN. There is no ACN CSI. <laughs> there could be. I would invest <laughs> in that, guys. Look. Just take the option and get y'all out of here. I got which ones? There were two. I, he didn't let me have riding supplies, but I do remember that. Either one. But, Preferably the first one. But... So... We can't, right? I mean, we're supposed to stick together. 
we... He wants information. He, he believed me. It's just... I didn't... Based on the stuff that we're not supposed to tell. Because it'll get everybody killed. By... You know who. Um, I mean... I, I don't know how much we should tell them. And then there's always the possibility that they're working with you know who. I guess. Or that they're just really nice people who go about and do their things. That they're a necess necessity for down here. Protecting if, everybody from the orcs. I, I wanted to get your guys' thought on it. If they're working with you know who, we're already, we've are we already been dead. Just for ha making it this far. Getting away from her. I don't know if we should tell but it's looking like we don't have much choice so we transition to outside Antlin you're being dragged through the square you get to see a number of people okay um yeah it's much similar to what I explained to Ileana lots of men not a lot of women very few kids you're dragged through the town's square. You don't quite get to make it into the building. You kind of get dragged over this singed patch of earth with this big, like, stone column. And, uh, you get strung up to the stone column, secured very heavily, and men begin piling wood and fat. As people begin to come at you and throw rotten fruit at you, calling you a witch. Well, that's not very nice. One of the guys says, say something else or cut your tongue out. Try any more of that magic shit. Freaking witches. He just looks to him and then looks around, trying to cover his faces with his uh, forearms from the uh, rock or the food. Yeah. One one little kid is, is, is taking everything as he sees you cover his face. He just tries to keep... He keeps hitting in, like, the, the lower abdomen, but you know what he's trying to hit with fruit. Yeah. As you are, you know, pretty kind of naked, I think, still. So you tore up your tunic. There's a, just a, a, a small piece no, of still, cloth. I still have it on. Okay. So, I think now is a pretty good time, as we, you know, given the majority of the party an hour and, and a half or 40 minutes to kind of get into things, where uh, we, uh, we go see where the rest of this party is. So, we... Uh, we cut as the camera, you know, starts to fade to black as the little boy finally nails Antlin right where it counts. <clears throat> and the fade kind of screams to black and, and more kind of so like chipper music is played as we, uh... We hear, you know, a nice piano playing in the background and much chipper and we find ourselves... It's at a very nice establishment, actually. As, uh, you know, the bartender is moving around and playing some music as, you know, there are many girls around and we kind of come upon a, uh, small happening with a pan flute out playing music. This is great! Oh my god, I should've done this years ago! The bartender's just, Thomas! Thomas! You get another drink from uh, that lady right over there! And slides that down the end of the bar. He, uh, he looks at the lady and he's like, you know, he goes, thank you ma'am, thank you ma'am, uh, from 305. <laughs> She's portly. But, uh, it is what it is. And 306, apparently. <laughs> She kind of blushes slightly and takes a fan and fans herself. Uh, 
Uh, you know, save your stream for later. So, what are you doing, Thomas? Other than hanging out in the brothel. Uh, Thomas is uh, out, you know, playing the pan flute, trying to make these people happy and stuff, right. you know, talking to doing some of the ladies. Well. Doing very well. Very well. And, you know, the ladies have seen an uptick in business as you've started playing um, the last couple days. And, you know, they're willing to give you some free rides. <laughs> no pun. I get it. <laughs> All puns intended. There we go. All the puns. Josh is losing it in, in a chat that's all a bard does it son he just says to the fourth wall <laughs> um, so Thomas is uh you know talking him up you know things like that mm -hmm. asking him uh you know asking him about some you know stories from around the area maybe he can make a new song for him yeah so you know you do get some stories as we discussed previously you gain the information you were looking for Mm-hmm. Um, you know, now you've been here for a couple days. Right. And, uh, you know, you're having a good time. People know you on a first-name basis. As, you know, you're sitting there and just kind of enjoying and living up life. A, a very diametric difference to the rest of the party. Thomas is, uh, ordering, like, the biggest meal he can, eating, like, a few bikes and saying, like, I don't want the rest of it. Someone breaks a bottle over in this little fight that just goes on in the background. And, uh, Thomas, uh, goes, that's my cue. And he starts playing fight music. Yep. Give me a, give me a, yeah. uh, roll. For pan flute? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a second. Well, let's see how this goes. Yes, Shade, exactly. Um, yeah, no, exactly. They start fighting to the music. People are laughing as uh, one guy gets thrown out, of, thrown out of the establishment. Guy comes up. He goes, you know, that was the greatest one I've ever been in. Puts down some gold in front of you. Picks you up. Put you, on the, put you on the table. Get him another shot. No, no kicking the halfling. Who would kick a halfling? Monsters, man, monsters. I know, right? There's gonna be that good show tomorrow, though. You should. You're never gonna want to watch that one. Execute really? Monster. Yeah. Really? Who they? You know, what monster are they executing? Ah, oh, Rosalind Clearwater. That bitch. Traitor. Rosalind Clearwater. Huh? That inspires me to a song. Tell oh. me about her. Ah, she's a child killer. She's probably someone that'd kick a halfling. Especially if you were down. Ah. Ah. Well, you can't get much more down for a halfling who like, laughs and, enemies. you know, slaps the bar. He puts slabs down the bottle. Went to our enemies. There's a shot somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm literally just, everything I hear on the on the, the soundtrack, I'm just narrating and throwing it in here, because why not? That's why we had a fight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know you can hear it, but it's fine. <laughs> it works for me. It works for me. Yeah. Went to go to our enemies and tries to get a whole operation destroyed. He's well in the bag, by the way. Yeah, I, I kind of figured that. Um, Tom, Thomas is like, ah, oh, I can't believe that traitor. Y'all seem like some, y'all seem like some good folks over here. Yeah, I mean, Why would she ever really, possibly do he that? Over to some guy like Sludge, Bob. No, Bob, you never let near your sister. Bob get thrown into the city because he's handsy. He tried to kiss the princess. <sighs> but let me guess, she was in another castle, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> let me guess, she was probably kidnapped. <laughs> uh, no, that's what Jerry is. That Jerry kidnapped the princess. I sent him oh. down here to serve a sentence. Uh, Thomas raises his glass. Jerry! Jerry! <laughs> He's wearing green. He's got like an orange Viking horn helmet. <laughs> 
Uh, Th Thomas is like, ah, so they're gonna execute the bitch tomorrow. Ah, excellent, excellent. Door swings open. We got a witch. <laughs> Thomas raises his glass. A witch. A witch. He raises two glasses. <laughs> they're stringing him up. They're gonna burn him tonight. They're gonna. Oh right. He came oh. with Rosalind. Oh. She's hanging out with witches. So immediately, Thomas, your mind's probably going to mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we can go throw can... things at him right now. Thomas knows mad cast magic. He does. Uh, he does. Yep. Okay. He's like, yeah, well, I want to go chunk some things at this witch anyways. <laughs> uh, post, this is all the bad shit. We were going to sell it to drunk people, but here. Can't just get <laughs> bags of fruit. I, ironically enough, this is perfect. <laughs> so... He, uh, you know, you kind of make your way out of the bar? Yes, he does. Ladies, I'll be back in a little bit. Of course. As they, uh... Okay. And we'll you kind of swing the door open, one of the ladies... Oh, no, Thomas! Yeah, one of the more attractive whores. Says, uh -huh. no, we're going on a date. And she, she says... I can hear, she's like, she leans down. I'll even lift you up so you can get a better shot. Hells yeah, well this sounds great. Let's do this. Yeah. Um, bring some food, bring some other food. We may get hungry. Arms may get tired. I, only, I need you to keep up your strength, like I said. Leans over and, and gets like a small, like, you know, whatever is right at EO handy. Yeah. Beats some non-rotten fruit. And, uh, okay. kind of walks out with you into the squares. A bunch of people... Antlin, you're sitting there getting pegged. Give me a perception check. Okay. Bug, bug, bug. Yeah. Not at first. You don't recognize my verses. You're pelted by things. Um, but, Thomas, you recognize that. That's Antlin. Mm hmm. That's not mad. Right. He looks pretty beat. Thomas is going to look at him and goes, Witch! You hear the voice drawn. You see Thomas with a basket of rotten fruit sitting next to a very attractive woman who's got what looks like to be non-rotten fruit. He tilts his head, lifting his head up, and then looks to the girl next to me and he just tilts his head even more. She lifts Thomas up so he gets a good shot. Thomas going to fling one at him. Yeah, right, yeah, right, uh, right in the chest. Okay. What's your story, witch? I need a I need a song. I need a tragic tale. Witches have guard, tales, right? The, the guard like elbows you. You can speak to the bard. Yeah, speak to the bard. <laughs> he just like looks at him and he looks between the guard and the Thomas and just... Why are you here? How did you get here? Uh, I was carried mainly. Uh, throws another fruit at him. Mainly to do this. Oh, that's not a tra tragic tale. I want a tragic tale! Tragic tale. Tell us your story, witch. Where are you from? Who you can hang out with? There are other witches. He like kind of nods and then begins to say, uh, <clears throat> First they took Rosalind and beat her in her cell. The crowd yes, cheers. Yes, we are, the we crowd cheers. <laughs> <laughs> like it is just burning. Ah! 
and then they took Ileana away from us. The crowd, huh? Who's Ileana? I don't know! Probably the succubus that hangs out with them. Succubus demon! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> then when she returned, they put her back in her cell looking ragged and somewhat more hurt than before. Yeah, I heard the succubus! <laughs> and after they were done with her, they burnt. Oh, I, I, I saw that, right, Sub? You heard it. You can, you can uh, assume. They tortured Roslyn again. Yeah, I torture the bitch! <laughs> screams. They tried to stop them. And now. <laughs> so You're trying to stop us, boo! The scream and jeer at you. The others, I do not know where they're at. But they're still in that cell. Yeah, the cells! Jump! Another, another gunshot randomly as someone knee highs and this is getting really into oh it. God. You're not quite sure how they have firearms. Neither am I. We're going with it though. I'm glad Firefly missed all the swearing, by the way. Do I remember <laughs> where, or was, do I know, like, which building we came out of? You generally know it starts to go upside, in the general direction. Wherever we were, they put us inside of a... They put us inside you know, of just a... the cliff cells! The chair clear just cliff cells! The cliff cells. And he nods. Tom, at this point. Thomas, uh, Thomas looks around because he's, you know, the cells. The, the lady, they're over there, darling. Ah. Well, ne next time, stop yelling. You know, we need to stop yelling and, you know, better explain this to the bard. The, the bard, the, the, the bard, just the, the whole crowd, just bards! <laughs> Bard! So is that it? Huh? It's all the people you, you know, seduced or whatever? Which? That's all I know of what happened. Myself, Roslyn, Ileana, and some form of torture and I was dragged out here. And the other two are still in their cells. Three. Three. Two. two. <laughs> All right. So he has two more in the cells. Huh. We could have more witch burning. Wait, there's, there's guys like, more of our witches? Looks to the witch. Looks to the witch. There are other witches with you? No. That means there's more witches! Witches always lie! They start rioting. They, they Go look get the succubus! <laughs> One shouts, and the guards leave. Alright. Tell us to look and go back to the bar! Some men go and follow, yeah, they rock back in. Basically, your whole crowd was the ruckus part that you took out uh -huh. of the bar with you. The rest are just, yep. just shouting at them and calling them witch. You guys are the more inebriated bunch, having some fun. All right. Yeah. So, however, we need to cut away shortly. Give me a second, Thomas. Uh huh. As no uh, the guards come storming down, mad they bypass your cell, they bypass Brienne's cell. They bypass Rosalind's cell and arrive outside Ileana's cell. Oh. One point says this Demon! And the door starts clicking and the clubs are drawn. Oh. Are, they, are you gonna resist? 
Oh, you're gonna start resisting. Or do you cover up? Cover up? Yeah, you begin to get uh, get beaten and, and not as bad as Antlin. And uh, you are shackled and sucked and dragged away. And you burn the demon! As they uh, start dragging her away. Shit! So yeah, you're dragged back into the center of the town. And uh, okay. you're attached on the pole opposite Antlin. Looks to Antlin. <laughs> well, I mean, you look in his general direction, you can't see him. You're on the opposite yeah. side of the pole. <laughs> but, yeah. So I take it things happened. <laughs> <laughs> As you're pelted by rotten fruit, yeah. He just, he just like, like, tilts his head to the side of his arm and like kind of like tries to tell her the bard called you a succubus and that's why you're here and I did not give no name he, and then he kind of like he says the bard he emphasizes the Oh. No bards. I'll always making things up to make themselves sound important. Make a good story. God what? looks. What other devils or witches are with you? I'm looking at you, Eliana. Lauren, there's technically one more in there. Okay. Oh, succubus. Charm them with my wiles. I knew she was too good looking, one drunk says. You the blushes. <laughs> Ellen, Ellen tilts his head again. And he just like, we'll free them once we burn her alive. He kind of like look like looks towards the generation, the the direction of Eliana, but he can't see her and just yeah. says, "Um, what is a succubus?" You'll be generally aware that it's it's, it's a type of demon. Fiend. That's what that's what they've been yelling. Sure. It's not not very good usually. Trick. Wild. I'll take your word for it as we're about to be burnt alive. They add more animal fat to the to the pyre. Since there's two bodies here. That that only makes sense. I'm getting the strongest into deja vu. <laughs> So, back inside, Thomas, uh -huh. you were with your, your lovely lady friend, and the, you know, you're, you're basically the personal cheering grab. Yes. And Thomas is, you know, of course, uh, you know, telling him, you know, about, uh, you know, being attacked by and, uh, we know two giants, we fought Haddens! Yeah! One man, like, smashed his head through a bottle. Haddens! <laughs> I'm concerned for him. I like how he smashed his head through a bottle. There was a breaking, breaking bottle Tom. sound in my ear as I was doing it, so only fit. Tom, Tom, Thomas shrugs and goes, Haddens, and raises his glass. And, uh, the guy goes, he tells him, reaches the bottle and goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just laughs. He's not a bright one, he's strong. <laughs> you just point him in the direction and he goes. And Thomas uh Thomas looks over at the uh, attractive one. And uh he's like, What's your name, dear? She looks to him and, goes, and slaps Thomas goes face. 
three days. You don't know my name? Screw you, Thomas Stoneheart. And walks away. Ah. Uh, that was, that's what I was hoping for! Damn it. <sighs> he looks at the others and he's like, Somebody buy me a drink. The, the fat one buys you <laughs> a drink. It slid down to you. <laughs> Two waves again. You swear she's got that Thomas mole. Wait. She's got that one mole in the upper lip. It's got like nine hairs yeah. growing out of it. All right. God, you look better than my ex. Oh, you flatter me. <laughs> yeah, I was married once. Didn't work out. You should go get the room ready for us, Thomas. I should. Yeah, you know, we we had a, uh, you know, we had to break up because of religious differences. Oh. I believe in good deities, and you know, she was obviously Orcus. Um. <laughs> so. Thomas, uh, Thomas nods. He goes, "Tell you what, why don't you go get the room ready? I'll be up there in just a little bit. I got some things I got to check on." Yeah, she goes up upstairs to your room. Uh huh. Um, before you get out the door, if you're leaving, you hear a thud. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll look. You, uh, you go up to your room. Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, she's passed out on the floor. Hand on forehead. Huh. Did you just hear? Oh. Your standards are lowering, Thomas. Well, compared to... Um, you know who it yeah, is. Uh, he'll, is there, yeah, he'll shut the door to his room. He goes, well, compared to Rosalind, I think it's kind of raising. <sighs> just claw snout. Um... <laughs> I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was you shouting. Outside. Yes. I thought the plan was to rescue them, not expedite their death. Um. He well, points to Ileana. Melamine points to Ileana out the window. She's the nice one. Oh, no. He's the one who named her. I need them all. Just face snaps again. Claw snaps again. <laughs> he, uh, he goes, hey, they all wanted the same area. I was hoping to get them all in the same area. No, they're split. Four. They were sp Just because Antlin couldn't figure it out. She looks. So, what's your bright plan now? Huh. Well, he's out the window. No, no, literally. He wants out the window. He just jumped um, the window? <laughs> you didn't. You're breaking up. Hey, let me talk. Oh, dang it. Oh. Go ahead. Huh? I'm Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. He uh, he goes. You didn't let me tell you the rest of the plan. Wait. We gotta go rescue. We gotta go rescue. We gotta go rescue the other three. Uh, okay. You, you. Are we going with my idea? Yes, we'll go with your... You know, if you stab me, I will drop you. Yes, we'll go with your... Okay. Uh, you don't understand that if I'm going down, you're taking you with me there, uh, Scaly. Gets out a small little, like, puff of fire. Gets out a small like, little sword. All right. Let's do this. That's sad. I don't know how you would have got it in a hurry with that one. Motion to the fat one. Opens the window. Dedication, sir. Something you know nothing about. Looks raises an eye ridge. Mm-hmm. 
kind of starts crawling out as, as darkness is falling. Thomas is going to uh, go uh, get in the windows. God, I hate this. I hate every moment of this. And uh, we'll go with it. We'll go with pl that plan. Okay. So, Anlin, because you have 120 feet of dark vision. Yeah. You're the only person who can literally see this. You watch a window in the side of the, ta of the tavern open. Okay. And you see Bellamine crawl out of the window, Thomas arms around its neck, one hand on a sword, as begins to scale the building to take off. Somewhere deep inside Antlin, he starts getting like this musical thing, and he's and, like, so Ileana in here, he starts making the sound. Dun, 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 dun. I thought it would have been this. Hold on. So, we will totally change the music. Oh my god, you finally cracked. No. As to the top of the tavern climbs this small gold wavern with Thomas on its back as the wings kind of... It was, again, the only person that can see this <laughs> because the building's over 70 feet tall. You see the two wings kind of come up and flap a couple times as it starts to skitter and just glide because it can't really make the beating of wings because of noise. I it just, gets a, it just, just out of everyone that has dark vision sight. You see Thomas just holding on to the waver and, and, and Antlin just starts humming <laughs> Fight of the Valkyries. <laughs> He, he just like mumbles to Ileana, just like only she can hear it as much as possible. He says, A hero is rising. So, Thomas, you're quickly approaching the cliffside, uh -huh. and you just see like the, the moon, because it's lit, and you see nothingness behind you as, mm -hmm. as, it, as it flaps up, and you go higher, more vertical. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, don't stab me, okay? Stab you, got it. We will both fall to our death. It crests and begins to dive bomb straight down. Tom Thomas is like, ah! The wind, the wind's like, you know, he's flapping your, you know, your cheeks. Are mm -hmm. you actually screaming? Well, Thomas wasn't expecting it. Yeah, okay. There, <laughs> there's a scream dropped down below. And, uh, mad. Since you're the close to the door. Oh, looks like one of them jumped to their death. Oh, we'll see which one in the morning. Who's there? Who? Who's left? You just see a streak go by you. A gold a gold streak. And a... Ah! As, as it dives down below and starts to circle up. You're an asshole! My vision, I can see. Hey, back up. Exactly, you can see. <laughs> you're an asshole. It lands at, uh, in uh, Brian's cell. Thomas looks around. Not this one! Which one? It's Brian, not Ross. Yeah. What? <laughs> not this one! This is the first one! No! Points, points to Mad Cell. He's nothing without his magic. Points to Ross's cell. Probably gonna need to be carried. This is your best ally right now. Brienne just like scratches her head and is like. Thomas is still mounted on the dragon. She just goes, This is Stars a sight that I never thought I would ever see. Be Bella looks up to you. Hey, hey, we're working right now, okay? You got captured. <laughs> <laughs> looks at Thomas. Uh Door. Th Thomas, <laughs> Thomas, Thomas looks at her, you know, gets off, and says, for the record, I mounted you. So. Looks. And I was the best looking mount you've had in the last three days. And kind of shuffles its butt towards the, towards the ledge. Hmm. Thomas gets out. <laughs> Thomas starts to reach Brienne just, like, oh. sneakily holds her hand out for just, like, a fist bump from Bella. <laughs> Bella is, uh, are you going to 
unlock the others from inside? Was that the plan? And that Bella's was the plan. Go, yeah. So but at, this point with, yeah. but, but, but at this point with the fist bump, Thomas is just going to sit there. No. Bella did a <laughs> fist bump. Bella's already crawling to Mad Cell. Hmm. Thomas, uh, <laughs> Thomas looks at uh, Brienne and goes, uh, you tell anybody about this. I will kill the dragon. Da, 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 da. So as, as Thomas begins to unlock the door, Mad, you see mm -hmm. Bella kind of scurry across uh, the... Yeah, you, you easily got it. Um, scurry across. They, they, they figured this was impenetrable. They didn't spend a ton on the locks. Imagine that. Um, <laughs> scurry across, look at you. Can you fight? Yes. What's the plan? They have uh, Antlin and Ileana outside. We know. They're not burning yet. Just kind of tries to yet? give a, a, a wavering smile. <laughs> they think they're both witches? Uh, what's a succubus? Oh, good to that, Mazza. Tilt his head. <laughs> and uh, begins to like heat your lock and, and melt the uh, the door hinge for you so you can open. Open. Can I get to my stuff? Uh, your stuff's not readily at your sight. So, with that being said, Thomas, you uh, you approach Rosalind's cell. Thomas, uh, there's a lump of is, here. Is it like bar? It's just yeah. is it bars? Mm -hmm. There's a, a hinge. You know, there's a lock there, yeah. just like there was on each cell. All right, Thomas will uh, attempt to unlock it. Rosalind, you look up as there is. Uh, and Tom is like, you know, legs around your cells to get himself high enough. Um, picking the lock to your cell currently. Is this my imagination? It's more like your dream boat, honey. As eventually uh, Bran and uh, Mad come around um, towards you. Know, towards you. Uh, when Thomas gets it unlocked, what you guys do see as you guys, two of you have taken stock of around. There is the sword because if you paid attention, they never took the sword with them. Still in there, you know, some burned hair is on it. Um, there is one long sword. Uh, and your belongings are not readily available. So, you have two party members uh, tied up at the stake. And the only two people that are quick enough and nimble enough and equipped enough to go for them are probably Thomas and Bella. Because you have guards at the top of the stairs. What is what is your plan? Anyone? Um... I need to find my things. It's the only way I've, I can be any help. Check your pants. I don't have pants on. Ew. It says the naked halfling. Anyway, let's go. He's not naked. He's fully I know, not yet. Don't get your hopes and dreams up, sir. Okay, Bella, so... Bella looks to Thomas. Are they then... tied up? Are they tied up in rope? Metal. Ch metal chains. Looks looks at Thomas and goes, Billy goes, I have an idea. Oh, Jesus. I don't even know who that is, but oh, Jesus. What if I bring you back to the saloon and you tell a story of that you heard when you were younger, about dragons, and then I breathe fire, not to kill anyone, but to scare and give you guys a chance to run. Deal. We can do this. Bella nods. 
How do we unlock the uh, the others? That'll be Thomas's job. That your gear is up top. The guards will leave you because you're secured. Just don't lock the cells. If they come, you know, hide in your cells. But they should chase me. If Thomas does his job. Okay. Be safe. Look, Bella looks at Thomas. I can't really have mm -hmm. another flight. Thomas goes. All right, lizard. Rosalind, you watch Thomas you literally get... mount the wavering and run towards the cliffside, and they just whoop out into the night. Rosalind just blinks. I forgot I hate this shit. <laughs> Does an extra barrel roll just on the way. <laughs> Do a barrel roll. Uh, and, and lands back towards, so they, I'm just going to get them narrated to there, and then you guys can have a small scene. Lands on, on the roof, allowing, you know, clawing down to the side, um, holding on so that Thomas can get back in his room. And just looks and says, good luck, Thomas. And skitters back up to the roof. Thomas just shakes his head. Fucking lizards. I hate fucking lizards. And we go to back in the cells for your guys' resolution. Did I see that right? Don't question it. Don't question it. We gotta get ready for this. Yeah, um... As, like, they fly away, you guys would just see, um, Brian shaking. Brian, what's wrong? Um... Brian just, like, looks at Rosalind and says... I'm not afraid for myself. I'm are you? afraid be for okay. Bella. I mean, okay. Have faith in her. There's only a city's worth of uh, people that want to kill her. Yep. She took on the dole <laughs> by herself. That's all. <laughs> yeah. So. Antlin and uh, Ileana. As mm -hmm. uh, Antlin, you watch them land back on the roof, but just the two of them. Thomas go in. You see Thomas exit. Uh, I, I, I'm assuming he's strutting like he's got a big story and yep. um, calling up. And you know, there's a couple people with him, and you know, uh, oh, the bard has a grand tale. The bard, you guys are screaming, and yeah, you know, they bring out like a stool to put you in front of the witches. It's like they're, they're about to light them on fire. Ah, Thomas uh... Thomas looks to you. Thomas, Thomas looks and goes, hold off a minute. Fire. I'm inspired now. Would you like to hear a story? The man walks out and looks at the other. Well, apparently you made an interesting choice. And looks towards Thomas. That was really my choice. A show, of course. I, I mean, apparently other shows decided to go with interesting route, so please, regale us, and he, he takes a seat. This is a story from my childhood. Somewhere a guitar, uh, Spanish guitar strums. Alright! <laughs> exactly. Down. He says, uh, long ago, there was a, there was legends. There was legendary men, legendary women, and legendary creatures. We call these creatures the end of the world. You know them better as we. You know them better as dragons. There was many of them. They said they could blot out the sky. All different colors you can imagine. The little girl raises her hand. Mm -hmm. The rainbow Beautiful. ones? The... Yes, Elon, the rainbow ones. <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> he, uh, he goes, but anyways, these dragons, 
their claws were the size, you know, <laughs> the claws were the size of, and he looks at one of the guards, well, you, sir. Their fangs say they could eat two cows in one gulp. Some ooze and ahs. Yeah. But that's not even the scary part. When you heard them coming, it was already a hurricane of wind. Then the next thing, fire everywhere. He looks at the he looks at the torch. That could that could destroy a field. These things. One of them could destroy a civilization. Imagine everything, all of this, just gone in a blink. Literally, you blink, it's there. You look up, it's gone. And the only thing you hear is its call. The sound of, you know, <laughs> from what I've heard, you couldn't understand it. But you understood its scream meaning one thing only. And that was death. Roll me a persuasion. Give me just a moment. And this is when I'm at one. You have an advantage? I feel it. I do. I can use it. I'll use advantage. Let's do this. Leona gets goosebumps. Uh, that was really good storytelling. Okay. And as he finishes, there's a loud roar as. Now we'll actually put the music back on. Because, I mean, this is totally a fight of Vacuary's moment. It really um, is. As there's a small burst of fire from the top of the tavern and saloon itself. Um, crackling in, and people go, Ah! Dragon! Dra and just the, the wings almost kind of making it look bigger. As it begins to swoop down, you are now seeing as it gets close, it's trying to be seen, Ileana. But it's just enough out of most people's dark vision. This torrent of fire that's skirting just around you and Thomas. Almost, not on, not on the pyre, but on like the strong stuff on the ground, stuff that's just enough to ignite it, as people begin to scatter, uh, alarm bells begin to sing as it, you know, catches back up, enough to it just seems like it's a tail, it's going, moving it as fast as it can, so we can't see that it's really about the size of a cat. Yeah. Well, a little bit bigger than a cat, but still, like a large cat, um, kind of darts um, around. You know, the bell's coming down in the cells. You hear the guns, under attack, go, go! And they start, you can hear them rushing away. That's our cue, let's go. Head up. So you guys begin to, who's carrying Rosalind? I'll help Rosalind. So, uh, yeah, you Brienne, kinda, you take the sword. Skip up, Brienne, you take in the sword. You know, you peek out the guards, you can see, like, buildings are actually being lit on fire now. Bella's uh, torrenting fire down on buildings. Um, generally ones that seem like no one's in them. You can kind of tell that, but uh, those are three of you that are around. Thomas, I believe you're going to start uh, picking the locks as you're shielded by yep. the fire. And, uh, yep, Thomas is going to uh, go up and try to pick them. You, you the Did you miss me? <laughs> you Did you miss me? Yep. I'm asking you really only did you miss me? Of course. How time you got here? Thomas kisses Ileana on the cheek. Oh, for that comment, you go last, buddy. <laughs> so mad as you, you carrying Rosalind up, you see it's kind of chest, some of your belongings, kind of just scooping them into bags, throwing them under your shoulder. As um, you, you, know, you guys are moving just parallel, kind of following Rosalind's directions out of the city. Um, yeah. You know, 
Thomas, you get both of them down as Bella makes another pass, breathing fire towards like the front of the uh, guild hall, trying to keep as many people in as she can. Um, you know, arrows just being loosed. Everybody, you guys are hearing consistent pull, pull, just firing orders um, as as arrows are literally just flying everywhere. Um, to make us move, make uh, it less on Rosalind and make us move a little bit faster. Uh, put Rosalind and myself on the broom of flying. Got to use it sometime. Yeah. Are you going straight up? No, 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 no. I'm helping guide the others out of there. Okay. Taking Rosalind's guy, Rosalind's directions to guide us all out. Yeah. Gotcha. So yeah, you know, you don't have your armor on by any means. Nope. The fire is kind of coming as, as Thomas. You're kind of, you know, it's it's dipping down, and say, you know, giving you directions, um, because it can see the others from its height and dark vision. Um, giving you directions as fires, you know, being, you know, rained down again in certain areas, trying to basically give you guys a, a secure path out. Uh-huh. Um, you make it towards the edge of the city. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you see a breath of fire, you know, kind of fire light up in front of you. Oh. Um, and on the other side of it, you see a dark outline of a figure. Through the fire. That's walking Thomas. straight towards you guys. Thomas uh, looks at the uh, looks at those two. He goes, "White here." And Thomas looks at the uh, figure and goes, "Hello." Uh. Walks through. <laughs> the person that was asking to tell a story stands there and pulls its sword. Oh. The person, the person who what? Asked you the story. The person that interrogated Ileana. Uh huh. Amaris. Did you say he walked through the fire? Oh yeah, straight through. Thomas looks at him and goes, "I don't believe we've had the pleasure." <laughs> he looks as you see everyone. It's you, Ileana, Antlin, a beat up Roslyn, um, Mad, and Brian. No, mm-hmm. no one but. You, Thomas, are in armor. You mm-hmm. see, you see, you look over to your left as guards are charging towards you. As a, another streak of fire um, comes down. Basically, you are in a burning square between these buildings. And he stands there and looks, and he just says, Po! You see, at the edge, yeah, at the edge, in the fire, Bella hit. And crash into one of the buildings. Through through the wings. No, you just hear like a sickly thud. And he smiles. He goes, This will be too easy, Rosalind. Grips the sword. And a sick smile comes on his lips. And he says, Should have taken the offer, all of you. And Thomas... You watch Mm -hmm. as he waves his hand and divine magic seems to bolster him. As he is a paladin. I was telling them. Of vengeance. Was telling them the ideas and the different plans that we had and then I was up here about to get burned. Alive. Without even having Now your sentence is all death. And he charges you. His Thank sword you. sword glowing white with like divine hatred. And as he's about to get you, Thomas, that's what we're going to end tonight. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh! Right before the battle. Oh. So, make sure thank you Wonderful. as as they as they escaped the uh, the, the you know, the instant execution. Had a little bit of fun on the way. A little bit kooky. Thomas, before anyone did anything tonight, good yes. plan that you, you, you laid out. Mm-hmm. Really worked out to to, uh, to the best for the party. I mean, there mm-hmm. could have been any other ways to do it, but hey, we got there. Uh, and uh, that is, uh, that's where we all say goodbye to Mixer. Goodbye, Mixer. Thank you for tuning in. 
Bye, Bye Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Max. Bye, Hugs, Thomas. Bye, guys. Hugs, Bye. everyone. <laughs>